You've seen the Olympics, right? Maybe you're watching figure skating where there's a skater who's being hyped because they're about to do some incredible jump in the program. And the announcers are telling you this jump is about to happen. You're watching. And as that skater begins that jump in that moment, you want them to be great. You want to see them land that triple quad jump or whatever they're doing. Whenever you or I are giving a presentation or doing anything where we're presenting to someone else, the same thing happens. Today, we're going to talk about why the audience wants you to be great. Welcome to Every Day, A New Thought. I'm Thor Chalgren. And today, we're going to talk about why the audience wants you to be great. Sporting events like the Olympics are an excellent example of this. In ice skating, for example, when you're watching those performers, you want them to be great. You want to see them land that jump. You want to see the golfer make that 50-foot putt to win the tournament. I think we can apply the same concept to any kind of performing that we do. And there are three things to keep in mind. First off, start by knowing that the audience wants you to be great. When Steph Curry in basketball pulls up with the basketball way outside the three-point line and he shoots, you, you know that you want to see it go in unless he's playing against your team. <laughs> Yes, and that's true. There are some times where people may not want you to be great. It may be your competition, but honestly, that's rare. Most people start off wanting you to be great. Second, when you begin something, don't make excuses as you start. We've probably all been in presentations or calls or Zooms where someone says something like, you know, I, I hope this works, or I haven't done this before, or I haven't practiced very much. First of all, put in the work that you need to so that you don't have to make excuses. Second, never begin by telling us something won't be great. Know from the start that you are going to do the best job you can in that moment. And that's the energy that you're bringing to it because we don't want to hear you say, oh, I don't know if this is going to work because then what do we go? Oh, I before you even started, our expectations are lowered. We're now like, oh, I, I really wanted this to be good, but now she's already told me that she doesn't think it's going to be great. So don't make excuses before you even start. The third point is know that you have a certain amount of time to prove that you know what you're doing. You know, you want to dazzle us with an opening line or a pr provocative question or challenge us with some interesting point of view that we hadn't considered. What this is doing is it's demonstrating your competency in that area that you are now going to take us into. You know, if you think about movies and you think back to the beginning of a movie, say like a Bond movie, what happens in a James Bond movie? They always have this pre-title sequence where it's this amazing sequence. And in the last probably five Bond movies, they've all like topped each other where it's a little bit of the story and it's this amazing sequence that demonstrates what the rest of the movie is going to be. And what happens when you watch this? If they did their job well, you're like, oh my God, that was incredible. I can't believe what the rest of the movie will be. That's the way that we want to think about our own presentations. Start off and really demonstrate for your audience that you know this and that you are going to be great in the rest of it. So I want to ask one last question. Do you know why this is true? It's because we all want to be part of greatness. We want to witness that incredible walk-off home run in the World Series. One, we want to see that dazzling speech that electrifies the audience and, and gives the speaker a standing ovation. We want to see that golfer who comes back from five shots down on the final day and wins the tournament on that final putt. We want to see the Zoom meeting be worth an hour of our precious lives. We want this because we want to witness greatness, I think, as a reminder to ourselves that greatness is possible for us. 
If we see someone else do it, there's some part of us that goes, this is also possible for me. So remember that about the audience. The audience wants you to be amazing because it's affirming for them that amazing is possible for them. So the next time you're performing for any kind of audience, remember the audience wants you to be great. Thanks for watching the show today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit like and please consider subscribing so that every day when there's a new thought episode, it will appear in your inbox. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.